Our free holder, you have seven free holders present. Thank you, Mr. Clark. May you please lead us in a prayer and a salute to the flag. Humbly we ask God, the giver of peace and the lover of charity, to give the entire family of nations true agreement with his will, to grant the light of his spirit on all who work for justice and peace. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if I can just ask for a very brief moment of silence, uh, Nelson Mandela passed away today. If we can take a moment to uh, honor him. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Clerk, may you please read the statement of compliance with the Open Public Meeting Act. The chair wishes to announce that pursuant to requirements of New Jersey statutes annotated, Title 10, Chapter 4, Section 10 of the Open Public Meetings Act, adequate notice of this meeting of the Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Union has been given by mailing the annual meeting schedule for the year 2013, along with periodic changes necessitated by circumstances, to the newspapers circulating within the county who are designated to receive such notice and by posting the annual meeting schedule for the year 2013 in the administration building, and further by filing the annual meeting schedule for the year 2013 with the office of the county clerk. Thank you. First, we have the approval of communications. Uh, may I have a motion to approve communications? So moved. Second. Motion made by Freelder Kowalski, seconded by Freelder Wright. Uh, clerk of the board, may I have a roll call? Freelder Bergen. Yes. Builder Estrada. Yes. Builder Granados. Yes. Builder Jallo. Aye. Builder Kowalski. Yes. Builder Wright. Yes. And Chairman Hudak. Aye. Chairman, you have seven votes in the affirmative. Um, and Mr. Clerk, uh, Frilder Mirabella just joined him, so you should get his vote as well. Builder Mirabella. Chairman, you have eight votes in the department. Thank you. All right, we have next an ordinance for final reading. Uh, Clerk of the Board, please read Ordinance 754-2013 by title. Ordinance 754-2013, amendment to the Union County District Solid Waste Management Plan to one, reaffirm the prior inclusion of the New Jersey Meadowlands Commission landfill and disposal facilities in Kearney, New Jersey as the county's designated facilities to which solid waste types 13, 13C, 23, and 27 are directed. Two, include the solid waste disposal services agreement by and between the Union County Utilities Authority and the New Jersey Meadowlands Commission for the disposal of solid waste types 13, 13C, 23, and 27 disposal services. And three, to direct all solid waste types 13, 13C, 23 and 27 to the New Jersey Meadowlands Commission landfill and disposal facilities in Kearney, New Jersey for disposal pursuant to regulatory waste flow control. Thank you. The meeting is now open for the public for the purpose of commenting on Ordinance 754-2013 only. Kindly state your name and town of residence for the record and adhere to the five minute limit. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. It's Tom Getson, Danner from Summit. Paul Cascase, our Department of Public Works Superintendent, I believe chairs the uh, Solid Waste Advisory Board for the UCUA. Do we know that the SWAC is endorsing what you're doing tonight? Are they in favor of it? Um, I, under the law, they are required to be consulted, and I know the resolution from the UCUA reflected they were consulted. Thank you. Any other comments? Good evening, uh, Chairman Pro Tem Hudak, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the three on the board, Bruce Patterson, uh, Garwood. I, I, I missed uh, Council Barry's answer about whether SWAC was endorsing it or not. It sounded like yes. Is that what he said? Oh, okay. All right. uh, just, a couple, just a couple questions. I didn't really see anybody here from UCUA, but maybe they are. But just could you explain the types, you know, for the public, because we see numbers and, you know, we don't know what it means. Just explain the types per number, uh, how this ordinance came about and uh, 
where in the past was this going that now it is going to the uh, going to the landfill up in the Meadowlands? If somebody could just explain those questions, thank you very much. Thank you. Town and Council? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I believe it's been uh, previously was directed to a facility um, that transported by rail out of Newark. Uh, I, I do not know the name. Uh, this would allow for these waste types, which primarily is construction, demolition, um, wood, timber, uh, items like that, um, consisting of type 13, 13C, 23, 27. Um, <clears throat> this is exactly the same ordinance that was submitted to the board some time ago. There was a defect in the notice in that the date of the uh, of the first reading was incorporated into the notice. DEP uh, advised that because it was in the, the second solid waste notice, there is actually two separate notices that have to be published with the solid waste management amendment. And uh, since one of them was defective, the entire thing had to be redone. So that's why it's on the agenda again. Thank you, County Council. Any other comments? I'm going to close that portion of this meeting. Um, I will move Ordinance 754 2013 for final reading and authorize the clerk of the board to advertise same in accordance with the law. May I have a second? Second. Seconded by Freeholder Estrada. Um, clerk of the board, may I have a roll call, please? Freeholder Bergen. Yes. Freeholder Estrada. Yes. Freeholder Granados. Yes. Freeholder Jallo. Aye. Freeholder Kowalski. Yes. Freeholder Mirabella. Aye. Freeholder Wright. Yes. And Chairman Hudak. Aye. Chairman, you have eight votes in the affirmative. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Um, now we have ordinance for first reading. Uh, clerk, please read ordinance 754 2013 by title. Uh, ordinance number 755 2013, an ordinance to amend the laws of Union County administrative code and policies in general legislation by amending chapter one union county government structure chapter 44 department head qualifications 44-1 d administrative services realtor jala would you please move ordinance number 755 2013 for first reading yes i'll move ordinance number 755 Second. Uh, the motion was made by Freelder Jallo and seconded by Freelder Kowalski. Uh, clerk, may you please uh, read the roll? Uh, yes, Chairman uh, Hudak. The final reading and the public hearing for said ordinance is scheduled for December 19th, 2013. Freeholder Bergen? Aye. Freeholder Estrada? Yes. Freeholder Granados? Yes. Freeholder Jallo? Aye. Freeholder Kowalski? Yes. Freeholder Mirabella? Aye. Freeholder Wright? Yes. And Chairman Hudak? Aye. Chairman, you have eight votes in the affirmative. Thank you. I'm now going to open the meeting for public comment for purpose of offering, comment, uh, offering comments on resolutions offered tonight for adoption. Kindly state your name and town of residence for the record and the resolution which you are referring to, and please adhere to the five minute time limit. How are you? Uh, Rob Rubino, City of Summit. Good evening. Um, first, I want to thank uh, the freeholders for the wonderful new Summit uh, Avenue pavement project that was recently completed. It looks great. Um, lots of citizens are happy that uh, they don't have a bumpy ride down to downtown. <coughs> um, and also, uh, I want to thank you for uh, considering the, uh, the calling of the herd and watching reservation. It's much needed. Our population, uh, I'm, all, I'm all for. Uh, reproduction as a gynecologist. Uh, however, our deer have really gotten out of hand. So um, <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, regarding um, resolution uh, 1011, the 2% uh, cap, um, I, I, I hope that theme is to be um, broad, more broad across the, the budget coming up this year, that um, sticking to the 2% cap or less, it's really going to help us here in Summit. 
Um, our, our model has been a 1.5% um, uh, limit on increase, merit increases this year, so um, we would ho I would hope to see that. Um, on resolution 1018, the uh, uh, new s uh, sewer camera, I want to know the extent to which we may be able to avail ourselves to that in the western end of the county. It sounds like a good opportunity for shared savings and in public works. We do spend a fair amount on that, so um, if Mr. Graziano would um, be uh, generous with that, we'd appreciate it. Um, I see on resolution 1005, uh, we, we just did that in Summit. Uh, we, we're integrating our time and attendance because we don't have a personnel department. Uh, I just want to know, do we have, a, is there a final price on what pay all solutions will be requiring each month? And also in tandem with that, uh, do all employees require, uh, do you require direct deposit? Is, do you have an option anymore for a paper check? Thank you. Uh, 1018, Director Graziano. you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, as I stated before, yeah, we will absolutely open it up to uh, to all the um, all the municipalities. Um, I guess once once the truck gets uh, gets done and gets built, um, I'll get it out to all the municipalities that's there, and they come down and see it. And you know, you know, whatever we could do to help out, we will. Thank you, Director. Director Taylor. dollar amount for pay all solutions is $37,500 for the three month period. From there, we'll be transitioning to a new payroll company effective April 1st. As far as the question on requirement for direct deposit, no, we do not require that point. In fact, some of our contracts don't allow for the flexibility and we are negotiating to move to that direct deposit issue only. Now, just that I, I mean, are we, I, I know the state of New Jersey uh, this year, I don't know if it was legislation or executive order, as to which it was, but uh, they're requiring direct deposit of all employees. I mean, uh, have we revisited that recently in terms of if there's any more flexibility in our grants? I know we say we, we aren't doing it for that reason, but is that something we might look at down the future or revisit? I know from a negotiation standpoint, that's something that is on the table. I will formally close that portion. Oh. Good, good evening, uh, Chairman Pro Tem Hudak, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the Freeholder Board, Bruce Patterson, Garwood, New Jersey. Uh, on, the on the bottom of page two, number 988, $34,000 to um, Mutual of America for a group life insurance to people not in the retirement system, which, which to me, that sounds awful strange. Why are you giving group life insurance? I mean, is that is that actually part of everybody else that works for the county? Uh, how many is, is it? Uh, does it fluctuate? What was last year to this year? Uh, how? What do you call this group of people that's not covered under the public uh, retirement system? Uh, you know, I don't know if you want to use the term exclusionary, but I, I don't think it is. And how do they end up in that situation? Uh, same as actually the next one down, 989, is how many people in, in that one, if that's the same group, it sounds like. Uh, page four in the middle, uh, 998, 999, 1,000, 1,001, 1,002, right in a row. That's about $300,000. Uh, it's money being spent on Runnels Hospital, which right now is, is being studied, whether it's going to be sold or not. Uh, you keep, keep saying it's not going to be sold. Uh, maybe you're doing something, but anyway. But the reason why I bring this up is, is it, it seems like you're spending an awful, awful lot of money on Runnels in, in the past six months, right when you started thinking about selling it. Uh, my question is, I, I mean, is it is this stuff needed, or, or is these kind of like Christmas presents going out to all the vendors before it gets sold? Uh, has anybody proved that these are definitely needed? Is there some kind of policy to prove that this cost is like this? Uh, 1005 on the bottom, uh, you're changing firms. I'm just wondering why why you are doing it, what happened to the previous firm here. 
uh, page 5, number 1011, uh, giving, every, I don't know how many people are involved in this, but uh, average of 2% uh, salary increases uh, based on employees' performance evaluation, which is interesting that you're employing, you're employing that. Uh, my question is actually who evaluates these employees because th this county has a tendency towards connected people doing better than regular hard-working people. So that's just a comment that had last half. Uh, 1014, page 5, Community Access Unlimited uh, for anger management training for incarcerated male and females you mentioned uh, i think how many were are involved there but but i guess you're really talking about not training but counseling uh, anger management counseling of of the incarcerated people and my concern here is community access unlimited it has really nothing to do with mental health and anger management training it's it's more of a uh, disabilities and and youth oriented organization so I don't know why you're giving them this thirty thousand dollars unless they're fronting and they're just going to turn around and and give it to somebody else which is wrong because they get a VIG and it shouldn't be so I'd like to hear why community access and limited is getting these contracts and I think maybe they got one last year uh, well, in fact why isn't it going to 101.5 which is right below Corizon Health it sounds like they're more into uh, health care and, and counseling so why don't you just give it to Corizon Page six, uh, 1017, it's, it's the pounds per pr uh, price per pounds. Last year was 03, now it's 05 cents. I, I thank uh, Director Graziano for at least uh, increasing the revenue generation. But my problem is la last year it was three cents. Who had the contract then? I mean, uh, this is, that's like a 70% increase. In, although it's small, but still, uh, it's just amazing that all of a sudden it jumped up that high. Uh, 1018, the, the, the uh, camera system, $120,000, that's a wow number. Uh, I'd like to know a little bit more about it. I didn't Oprah an RFP to see what it was about, but I, I guess it was out for public bid. But that's a lot of money, and I'm just wondering if there's a separate cost to retrofit uh, the vehicle for that camera system, and, and what is the large main size that it can handle, uh, is a robotic system because this is a big number for for a camera system, big number. Mr. Patterson, go ahead. Time. How about one more? Now nah, we're good. Give five. Is, is this the get, prelude uh, of next year? Gets a shot. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Nine eight eight and nine eight nine. Director Guzzo, you want to enlighten Mr. Patterson on those? you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think the question was, what would you call it? I would call it disparate treatment, but it's by the state of New Jersey. Those employees that are paid under the uh, Workforce Investment Act are not eligible to be in the PERS system. So without this pension system that uh, and the life insurance, employees that work within that system that are paid out of that grant would literally have nothing when they leave service. So that's the reason for both the Mutual of America and the pension system that's in place um, for 31 employees that work within that system. Thank you, Director. Uh, County Manager, would you tackle 1,011 and 2% increases and as to who's doing evaluations? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, evaluations are done by the individual's immediate supervisor, be it department head, division head, or bureau chief, depending on who their uh, direct reports are. Thank you. Uh, Director. Uh, Rear Jordan in uh, regard to 1014 community access or actually Director Guzzo is going to come up and explain that. Through you Mr. Chairman, while Mr. Patterson is right that uh, community access does provide services, job placement and job training for persons with disabilities, they are a multi-service agency and as such they not only do that, they also, if you if you know and recall, they provide a, our shelter program for the mandated gin shelter. They also provide various types of training throughout the county, including anger management. Uh, they do an excellent job. They have a well-trained staff, and they're used quite often with different community-based organizations within Union County and beyond. They do do an excellent job. Thank you, Director. Uh, on on uh, 1017, that was a competitive bid. 
Uh, 1017, that was the re recycling? That was a competitive bid, so congratulations on getting more money. Just the only question I had. New Tech had it last contract also. On 1018, um, the retrofit, is there any cost in retrofit? Um, I'll, look, I'll, I'll look through the bid specs for you, but yes, there is going to be a cost. That's, that's all included in this whole thing, and I'd be that's glad to. That's inclusive in the number. Yes, everything's inclusive in the number. Right. All right, thank you, Director. Chairman, if I, if I, if I may, uh, there, was, sure. there were a couple of questions about the uh, about the newer uh, uh, sewer management system. Perhaps sure. we could do some type of public demonstration in the future, and and again, if towns that wanted to be involved and take advantage of it, we could we could explain and show them what it's all about, and uh, maybe put something like that together if that's uh, if that's okay. That's a great idea, County Manager. Um, and I know there were some questions in regards to spending at Runnels, but I just I don't I don't think we there weren't specific other than you know I'll just say and. I know members of this board have said it before, we're studying a variety of options at Runnels Hospital right now, but nonetheless, we do own a hospital, we do operate a hospital, and we do to make sure that the, care, the patients and the residents of that hospital receive excellent care, and we will continue to do what we have to do while we own that hospital. The uh, next person who has questions, anyone else? Pat Moschetti, New Providence. Uh, good evening, freeholders. I just have two comments. One's regarding on page six, uh, resolution uh, 1021. Uh, the speaker mentioned the, uh, the specialized uh, suppression courses for 76 employees, uh, excuse me, firefighters. Um, from seven other counties, two other cities that are not part of Union County, and some municipal municipal uh, fire places. If we're, the question is, if we're spending $304,000 for these two courses, are the other counties, municipalities, and cities paying their share for their firefighters who are attending? Second resolution is on page five, 1011. This is regarding the um, salary activity that's gonna take place soon. Uh, in your salary administration process, can a performance evaluation lead to a reduction in pay? Uh, this would uh, allow more money for your excellent employees to get more than 2%. It would also have several uh, incentives because if I've been involved in a lot of different ma salary management processes, if everyone hovers around 2%, top person gets 2.1%, the nominal person that gets 1.6 percent, that that doesn't do anything in terms of sp uh, keeping the high em employee trying to go higher, and the low employee says, "I don't have to do anything. I'll get 1.6. If I bust my chops, I get 2.1. It's not going to happen. So uh, it's the the range is too small for you to have uh, different working relationships between the different people. And over time, those who are really trying hard." It's very hard for them to keep going year after year when they get a 2.1% raise because their pal who's doing nothing gets 1.6. If you have a reduction in their pay, they can make a decision. Do I work to do my job or do I just let the system let me roll through? It's a part of reality. Ask people who are in the salary administration business if that's a fact. It is. Thank you. Thank you for your comments on that. In regards to UASI, um, the UASI region, I, I, I got it, Director. The, it's, just, uh, it's a number of municipalities and counties. They pull together their resources. It gets them um, a bigger buying power in terms of grant dollars and uh, the ability to allocate um, equipment and dollars and manpower and things like that. So it, it works proportionally, and it's spread around that way. So any other comments? Yeah, yeah it's a grant. Yeah, it's a grant. Yeah, it's a grant. Maria Echeverria, Elizabeth, um, page 5, 10, 12. Um, I have a question on this. Uh, who does it go to? Where does it go? Who is it, you know, who benefits from this? Because I think there should be more, if more money going towards that if they're actually going to do the right thing instead of, I mean, where, where these examiners are at you know, things like that nature. And what do the prosecutors do? Because in my experience, they did nothing. Thank you. Tim Eisenhower? Mm -hmm. With 
back. I'm particularly disturbed to hear that there's a perception that we do nothing on these cases. We know uh, you don't. <laughs> in this particular instance, uh, uh, the same, the, the nurses who are part of this program, uh, I think we average probably 80 responses a year to the hospitals. Um, as the board is well aware, we have a, a very well-functioning child advocacy center that handles both minors and adult sexual assault cases. Every time that somebody is the victim of that type of assault, uh, rather than put the victim through a horrific experience with, uh, let's say, people who aren't necessarily trained in specifically dealing with them, treating them as any other patient that might come through the emergency room, uh, this program exists specifically for those victims to lessen the hardship, the trauma of what they've gone through. They're specifically trained nur nurses. It's overseen by a nurse coordinator called out whenever our people are called out. They meet them at the hospital. There are separate facilities used at most of the hospitals where it can be done so that they're not commingled with the rest of the patients. Uh, they are, the nurses themselves are specifically trained. They treat the victims in a specific manner. And it's an excellent program. They are selected by the nurse coordinator and they are specifically trained in this area. Thank you, Pam. They do an important job and they do it well. Any other comments? No more comments. I'm going to close that portion of the meeting. May I have a, a motion to uh, 988 to a motion to adopt resolutions 988 to 1022? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Moved by Freelder Mirabella, seconded by Freelder Kowalski. Clerk, may you read the roll? Freelder Bergen. Um, as to 2013-994, abstain. Yes, as to all others. Builder Estrada. Yes. Builder Granados. Yes. Builder Jallo. Aye. Builder Kowalski. Yes. Builder Mirabella. Aye. Builder Wright. Yes. Chairman Hudak. Aye. Chairman, you have eight votes in the affirmative, with the exception of resolution. 994 with seven votes in the affirmative, one abstention. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. The meeting is now open to the public for the purpose of commenting on any matter. Kindly state your name and town of residence for the record and adhere to the five minute time limit. Councilman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Rob Rubino, uh, Councilman, City of Summit. I wanted to re reiterate uh, what I said the last time I was here uh, regarding the 2% cap. Really, uh, we're hoping in Summit that you can um, find the, the discipline to hit the nominal 2% cap without any of the exemptions, um, and 0% would be great uh, in the sense that uh, we're losing our biggest taxpayer, as you know, with Merck, which is 9% is of our tax base. Um, if, that, if that land does not get um, taken over by a, a a similar size corporate tenant, they, they can be reassessed uh, to a lot less, and, and that burden would, of course, fall upon uh, the, the taxpayers and would devalue the homes and ulti ultimately trickle down to the apportionment that the county gets from the city of Summit, which, of course, you know is, is the uh, largest taxpayer in, in, in the county. Um, so uh, I hope, uh, with the assistance of uh, uh, Al Fiella and his financial team, they can work with us to have a goal setting uh, budget for 2014. And I do appreciate uh, Freeholder Granados uh, facilitating uh, my contact with Al, and Al's been gracious enough to work with us, so thank you. Um, <clears throat> I, I did want to bring up uh, the notion of broadcasting uh, your meetings live uh, to the City of Summit. We don't have that, and lots of uh, folks would like to see that, so I don't know who to turn to for that, but we do have Hometown TV, and I've never been able to see this live. Um, so. I don't know if we can work towards that in, in, in the um, interest of, of transparency. We'd love to be able to see these meetings broadcast live uh, next year. Um, and uh, if I don't speak to you, I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We'll see you next year. Yeah. If, if I may? Yes. Um, I just uh, I spoke with uh, uh, Councilman Rubino briefly, and, and um, I've committed um, – the resources of my administration, our economic development team, to work very closely to try to find an alternative uh, to Merck leaving, and that's something that's very important to the county in terms of jobs and economic development, and we're going to work very closely with Summit on that. All right, thank you. 
Good evening, Mr. Chairman. It's Tom Getzendanner, Councilman and Summit, just piggybacking on Councilman Ravino's comments here. Uh, I'd like to invite you people to definitely come out and see how we do our goal setting process in Summit. It's quite disciplined, it's uh, foresighted. We do with multiple year budgeting, we look at out years, we don't have their binding, of course. But most important, we set a bogey for our city manager before he even drafts his budget. <coughs> he knows exactly what it's going to roll up to, and not anymore. So I, I would suggest that you, Freeholders instruct Mr. Vela when he does his bu budget drafting in another month or two to tell him ahead of time what you want to hit. Don't let it go sky high. And then if he has to leave things out in order to meet your bogey, then you can subsequently put things back in. But work from the bottom up as opposed to getting something which is egregiously too expensive and then leaving it up to you at the last minute to have to cut. It's a really important tops down budgeting process that works. John Berry, uh, Kenilworth. Uh, let's see, it's, well, two things. First, a quick one. Uh, that alternative for Merck leaving, uh, I mean, Merck is leaving for Kenilworth. So I hope you're not, you know, trying to keep him there or whatever. Is Just to clarify that this is to put somebody in the uh, Merck property in Summit. This isn't to talk them out of moving to Kenilworth which is 20% of the tax base there. I mean, just, just I mean. No, that's not, that, no, Priola, that's not, uh, that's not what we're trying to do. We're all very supportive of emergency. Okay, good. Uh, the main thing is on this thing, you're gonna go on in executive session, the uh, Kenilworth pending litigation. Uh, it's gonna be, like Kenilworth wants to tax Galloping Hill $120,000 a year. It's gonna come out to that. and. At the last meeting, I was confused because you were going to pay, uh, but the county council said that you were going to appeal to, uh, December 1st, which is a Sunday. It was going to be a Monday. But the thing is, there was no meeting scheduled, so there was no decision that could be made. It would be on county council's recommendation. And I, I guess the confusing part of all this to me is that, you know, in, in all these... Um, uh, agenda meetings, people, you know, department heads come up and they say, good evening, freeholders, I have five resolutions for your consideration and I would be happy to answer any questions. Whereas, in reality, it really should be something like, good evening, freeholders, this is what I'm going to do. Anyone have any problems with that? And that seems to be the case here. I think this Kenilworth tax appeal merits consideration. I'm assuming, that's, the, that's my other question, is it being appealed? And I'm guessing it is. But it really should have a discussion by the board rather than just a department head saying, go ahead, and then we'll tell, tell you about it later. Um, for example, it, is the county paying anybody else taxes, any other government taxes? Uh, I, I looked a little while. I couldn't find anything. Is anybody, uh, or is any other, are you aware of any other government that is paying any other government taxes? Uh, the other thing is the timeline for this. Is this going to be something that has a set date, like January 1st, it's going to be heard, whatever, or is this something that could drag on for years and years? And, is there, and then is there going to be a special counsel for this that, that can, you know, milk fees? I didn't see anything on here. And, I, well, you probably won't tell me. What are your grounds? Or if you won't tell me, is this something that could be Oprah? Because if not here, I will go to Kenilworth and bring this up also. Uh, so, main question, is this being appealed and why couldn't you talk about it before the appeal? I think it, rather than now, a closed session, they're probably just going to tell you what they're going to do and you have no input. It's already on appeal, so, I, and that, yeah, if you can confirm that, that it's on appeal. That's it. It is on appeal. It's on appeal on two issues. It's on appeal with reference to our entitlement to an exemption, and secondly, as to valuation. Uh, the matter is scheduled for a discussion tonight, um, and there was a discussion in executive session with the board. Uh, it does not require any kind of formal action <clears throat> in terms of proceeding with the appeal. It was discussed. decision was made to file an appeal. That appeal was filed post-meeting with the board. 
um, and that's where it is. In terms of timing, um, the tax board is required to uh, complete added assessment uh, appeals by the end of the month. Uh, do I think it will be concluded at the end of the month? No, because I'm pretty sure whichever party loses will appeal to the tax court. That will stay everything, and that is usually a fairly lengthy process. Thank you, County Council. You're welcome. Hey, man, that was pretty thorough. We don't need anything yeah. to add. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, any other comments? Pat Moschetti, New Providence. Um, my joint resolution period, my questions about the salary administration were not addressed, so I'll ask again. In your salary administration process, can an individual get a negative pay raise? And if they ha can, has it happened in the past? My question here is, what is the value Union County assets and inventory, and what date was that last computed? Thank you. Um, let's start with the salary question, County Manager. Uh, through you, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, we do not have a mechanism whereby individuals can receive reduction in salary. If, if individuals are not rated satisfactory, they will not receive the 2% increase. Having said that, um, the policy committee has uh, directed me to look at our structure, look at our terms of, of, of how we do evaluations and things of that nature, and uh, it's going to be one of the things I'm going to be working on for 2014, how we could improve that whole process. Um, did you want to take a stab yeah. at the valuation Beebe. of our atoms? I, I, bet you Beebe could, I, bet you, I bet you BB could, I bet you BB could bang, give you an answer. A broad question. Oh, no, no. Yeah. I figured she'd have the exact number. Answer, but through you, Chair, uh, the the, the um, resolution 1013 uh, is uh, approving uh, a contract for operations management, which will help us with our asset management, with our um, with with uh, calculating everything we have. I don't know about the value of it, but what we have, the utilization of it, its availability during emergencies, and any other use that we have for it. So we can optimize uh, providing the services we, 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 we provide to to the residents. I can't answer the question about the value of the Excellent process. Sense. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Comment? <coughs> Tina Rana Cranford, uh, I'd like an explanation. You purchased eight new uh, Ford Explorers recently in the hands of them out to county employees. Uh, what I'd like an explanation about is they no longer have the county government license plate on them, so these employees are driving around <laughs> in unmarked vehicles. So if they misuse their vehicles, as has been reported in the past, uh, the public has no way of knowing that that is a county vehicle. So I'd like an explanation what this new policy is, that um, your employees no longer are driving around with the CG license plates. I'd also like an explanation. Uh, the Union County Watchdog Association closely monitors uh, your employee position control changes. There's a wealth of information there. Um, and a recent one, and this is a batch of uh, your controls from September 9th to October 18th. You are giving your Director of Public Works and Facility Management a uh, new title. It's a title you're creating, and it's a public uh, civil service title. So. Um, Interesting. I thought uh, you had to take a leave of absence before you could slash a title and give a department head a civil service title. Uh, this uh, employee was the overseer of your employee, Neil Palmieri, who had um, pleaded guilty in federal court on October 2nd. He uh, worked up until just a few days uh, before he did that. And um, there's some interesting information on this sheet itself. I mean, it looks like. Uh, I can't read the signature, but it matches the county manager's signature, so I, I'm going to say Al Fayella signed off on this as a department head on April 15th. Uh, administrative services, Matt Gerardo signed off on it the same day. Then it went to uh, personnel who signed off on it. I don't know who signed it. On, uh, it looks like September 15th, and then the finance department signed off on it on uh, October 15th. 
So you have um, actually the finance department uh, and administrative services are involved with the purchasing, um, how you process your purchasing. So they were all sort of uh, overseers of what happens with this employee who pled guilty um, to fraud. Uh, he was stealing from the county. So, the, so um, the, the timeline is interesting. I'd like an explanation about that. And I'd really like an explanation from the county manager because there's no effective date. It's left blank. And when he signs off on it, the county manager, who is the final say on these matters, uh, he signed off of it and he didn't sign a date on it. So th this turned up in our position control uh, OPA request for the uh, between 9-9 and 10-18. So it happens within that time frame. But uh, I'd like an explanation as to why you're uh, further protecting this employee. Uh, as a department head, he served at the pleasure of the county manager. Now with the civil service title, it, he, it protects him. So not only did you not hold any authority over this employee who pled guilty to stealing from the county, what he was doing was uh, processing false purchase orders and then getting kickbacks from the vendor. And then, and then that, you know, that happens. And this all began in uh, March, on March 25th. He entered, Neil Palmieri entered an information plea with the FBI. Not sure if you knew about it, but it wasn't public knowledge. This came out after he pled guilty. So this, um, you know, the dates are really um, alarming here. So that happens on the 25th. Uh, Palmieri resigns on September 27th. He pled guilty on October 2nd. And then you had another vendor, Positive Attitude, plead guilty to a similar charge involving Palmieri again uh, on November 20th. So you didn't hold any of Neil Palmieri's superiors accountable and not only did you do that but you are protecting further protect you're taking measures to further protect his immediate superior and the public deserves an explanation as to why you're doing that and we also deserve an explanation and Mr. Fiel is here tonight he can tell us right now why there are no dates on this uh, document no effective date no sign off date and uh, if we didn't ask for this information it, it would never be brought to public knowledge. I mean, this is the extremes we have to go through to see what's going on here. I like an explanation for both those things. Good evening, uh, Chairman Pro Tem uh, Udak, ladies and gentlemen of the Freeholder Board, Bruce Patterson Garwood. Uh, I would hope that we're actually going, you know, as the public, we're going to get an answer to uh, Tina Renna's questions because she brings up interesting things. I'll tell you, it's like, you know, I, every time I listen to her, I keep thinking this place is like a criminal organization. I, it's like you're protecting your own, you know. And, and, and that, just a segue, I, you know, Nelson Mandela, he passed away. And, and uh, he was an icon for fighting injustice. And, and basically, a lot of these public that show up here uh, are doing a similar light. They're, they're fighting the injustice of what this system has become. And, and if you listen to Tina Renna, she points it out pointedly that, that you're just protecting and self-serving and you're switching things around. We got, we got County Manager Fiello uh, you know, doing a, a reorganization. It'll be interesting to find out how he reorganizes, is he gonna cut 10% of the workforce? I don't know, that'll be a question in the future. But anyway, just to continue on. Um, Councilman Getzendammer brings up a, a point about inviting you to the goal setting meetings that Summit has. And, and, and Summit has come here many times and they've explained about their, their taxes increase like 0.6%, 1%, things like that. And he's inviting you to come to the goal setting meetings and also you know, to counsel with Summit as to uh, how to address taxes. And, and this is very important that I really strongly suggest that you do show up there, only because we've had the freeholders say that there's no experience needed to be on the freeholder board. And this may be the explanation, you know, the, the reasonable explanation of, of why this, count, this county has uh, every year in financial stress and, and financial failure with, with taxes going up 5%, 6% in the past has been 8%, 10%. No experience. So I suggest you really go to somebody who da does have experience. 
Uh, on the Kenilworth appeal, uh, appealing the taxes, that's interesting. Uh, I'm just wondering, I guess, does that include the Board of Ed taxes? And, uh, you know, I don't know how what's going to come out of it, but, but it, again, this is a, this should be something, and I brought this up a year ago about, you know, is Kenilworth going to get taxes since there's a lot of private enterprise going on, and you guys didn't answer because you didn't know, but really you should know, and this goes back to who has the experience in the county to actually bring these facts up. It always falls back on the public bringing these facts up, the watchdogs bringing these facts up. We're the ones that actually have to straighten this organization out, the asset management program, which obviously was a failure of a system where generators were disappearing, chainsaws were disappearing, and, and Tina Renan, the watchdogs, brought it up. Where is the asset management? Well, you finally brought one in, but you know, listening to Matthew Dorado, who's now gone, he mentions what it is is, is these, these plastic sticky, peel on and sticky things on your equipment, which can easily be peeled off. So even now, we're, we're saying the asset management system is going to fail, obviously. So I, it, just, it just boggles my mind when, when I come to these meetings and listen. Uh, as to the increasing the salary, uh, you did have a previous uh, resolution uh, about a month ago talking about raising the um, ranges of the, the groups that you identify uh, uh, that people fall within. And that range was increasing 1.6%. And you said at that point, well, there's no impact, but then I, I mentioned that you did mention that there's two people going to be impacted. Matthew Dorado did mention, yes, two people. But now, now we're looking at th this, there is an impact. So you guys weren't really telling the truth because you increased to 1.6%, and now you're going back and you're planning to increase people's salaries 2% uh, or more or 2% or less. We don't know what the system is. Uh, Mr. Moschetti kept asking, and, and you're kind of like evasive. But, of course, it's based on evaluations. So, I mean, at, at that point, yes, salaries are being increased. That's the reason why you raised the ranges, and you said it wasn't going to impact anything. But, yes, there's a major impact coming. Salaries, 2% aggregate on average. So whatever the total dollar amount of salaries in the budget is going to be increased 2%, it sounds like. And... I don't know if you mentioned, what is that dollar amount? What is that dollar amount of 2% of all the salaries going to be? If somebody could just point that number out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Director Taylor, do you have numbers in regards to the uh, amount of the increase? Or projections, I suppose, uh, is, is a better way to put it. Based upon the estimates of active employees that we have as of today, the exclusionary raises should not exceed $650. Maria Etch, Maria Elizabeth, I would so like to get second these two people, and yes, some answers need to be answered. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? And with that, I'm going to close that portion of the meeting, uh, and we'll start with freeholder reports, and we will go from my left, freeholder Granados. Okay. Um, I'd like to congratulate Rawway for receiving a school award at Roosevelt Elementary School in Rawway. has just been declared the grand prize winner of a statewide program called the Jets Play 60 Eat Right, Move Right. This program partners the Jets football team with the State of New Jersey and the American Dairy Association and Dairy Council. It designated to create more opportunities for younger people to choose healthier foods, especially fresh produce, and to engage in more physical activity. So on behalf of the Freeholder Board, I'd like to th congratulate the students, staff, and teachers of the Roosevelt School, and thank you all for setting a great example for all students in Union County. Also, um, hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. I'd like to thank all the different municipalities and organizations who have held Thanksgiving luncheons throughout the Union County. I know we had local PBAs, we had Aramark um, provide donations to different municipalities. I know it was great meetings all across the county, so I appreciate it. Thank you. Real DeBerg? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to mention briefly that um, next Thursday I have the uh, pleasure of participating in the ceremony in Springfield at the uh, Chisholm Civic Center where they're going to be opening their new senior wing, which was recently renovated. Um, that ceremony is next Thursday, December 12th at 11 a.m. for anyone who wants to attend. Uh, I'm proud that this county uh, also was able to participate 
help them out financially with a $70,000 community development block grant uh, to help pay for part of that project. But more importantly, I want to point out that that's just a small portion of the $4.8 million in community development funds that the County of Union gave to all of the municipalities in the past year. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Ojala. Yes, Chairman. I'd just like to follow up on your statements and sentiments with regard to the uh, death of Nelson Mandela, who died today at the age of 95. Um, he was a great hero of mine, Nobel Peace Prize winner, politician, activist, um, first president of South Af Africa to be elected by a fully representative multicultural vote, served the nation from 1994 to 1999. He was incarcerated for 27 years for believing something contrary to the government. Um, but he also, after being released, um, understood that government was a means to effect change for uh, his country. Um, as, as a person of African descent, he personally a hero to me. Um, and, you know, one of the reasons I went to law school, one of the reasons why I sought to be a politician. Um, since we've already did a moment of silence, I think I'll just read a quote of his, if that's okay, Chairman. Um, I'd like to share this quote. I've walked that long road to freedom. I've tried not to falter. I've made missteps along the way, but I've discovered the secret that after climbing a great hill, one only finds that there are many more hills left to climb. I've taken a moment here to rest, to still a view of glorious vista that surrounds me, to look back on the distance I've come, but I can only rest for a moment, for with freedom comes responsibilities, and I dare not linger, for my long walk is not ended. Nelson Mandela. Um, now his walk has ended after 95 years of, of great service to not only his country, but to the world at large. I'm um, truly a great hero of our age, and, and you saw the list. Thank you. Thank you, Freelder. Freelder Estrada. Go Cubs. Thank you, Freelder. Freelder Mayor Bell. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. I uh, want to echo Freelder Jallo's uh, comments about uh, Nelson Mandela. I'm not exactly sure how uh, Mr. Patterson and Mr. President Mandela belong in the same sentence, but I'll uh, leave that up to other people to determine. Uh, I do want to mention a couple of things. Um, next Friday, there is a, an extension of the Union County Means Business Program that's happening at Kane University, where students from around Union County have been uh, called together, uh, nominated by their schools, to participate in, in a leadership training and an opportunity to get together uh, over, I think, around 200 students from around Union County are meeting at a program called UC STEP, and I'm very proud to, uh, to see that program and, and, and hope that becomes a regular uh, part of our Union County Means Business uh, program moving forward. Uh, I will also say that several weeks ago I had the opportunity to participate in uh, the Union County College Foundation Gala, which raised over $200,000 uh, for the uh, college, our college, and it was I was delighted to participate and see, you know, 300 people turn out, and and Friel de Granados uh, joined me there, and we had a, a, a great time and, and raised a lot of money for Union County College that will go for uh, scholarships and providing opportunity for our students around Union County. Uh, the last thing I'd like to mention is, um, you know, we're in the um, uh, the end of, of Hanukkah, but beginning the uh, continuation of uh, our holiday season. I encourage people to shop local in their downtowns and participate in uh, all the events that are going on around our county. But um, you know, you can go to the malls and do all those things. And certainly, we have uh, you know a great mall in, in Jersey Gardens right here in, in uh, Union County. But um, shop local and, and do your part to uh, to spend money in our downtowns. I think it's important, and uh, I think it's uh, something uh, very worthwhile. I like to do it around the the county, and I think I'd encourage other people to do the same. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. That concludes my comments. Thank you, Chairman. Um, as we head into the next round of holidays, I'd like to let, uh, remind you of some opportunities for charitable giving around Union County. Um, the Sheriff's Office is taking donations for the annual Tree of Hope, uh, which you can find at the county courthouse. Call the Tree of Hope hotline for information on donating toys, clothing, or money, and the number is 908-629-2158. That's 
Abbey, here in the administration building, we have boxes on every floor for collecting non-perishable food items for the local food kitchens. You can find them right outside of our elevators. Uh, and if you'd like to drop off a new unwrapped toy, there's also a donation box outside of the first floor elevator. On Sunday, uh, December 8th, there's the holiday craft, uh, nature craft show at the Trailside Nature and Science Center. And the, uh, just to remind you, the, it's a free admission, but we are requesting that you donate a non-perishable food item or a new unwrapped toy if you would like to attend the Nature Craft Show. We have a bunch of other activities coming up around our parks, so I encourage you to have a look at the website, uh, especially uh, Skating with Santa at Warrenanko Park on December 15th. It's likely to be a lot of fun, so thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Holder. Uh, County Council, any comments before we go to uh, no comments, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. County Manager? I do have one brief comment, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd also re uh, like to recognize and, and honor uh, a local African-American leader uh, as we're honoring uh, the late Nelson Mandela, and that's Diane Johnson, um, who has announced a retirement. Uh, Diane has been the director of the Newark uh, Department of Housing and Urban Development Regional Office for over 30 years. She's been a mentor of mine. She's been instrumental in, in in the county receiving millions of dollars to help low and moderate income persons. And she's taught me the value of how important it is to serve all those who are underserved. I'd like to wish her well on behalf of all the county and thank her for her service. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well said, County Manager. Uh, we wish her well, but um, you know, it's a big loss for HUD. Um, and I have no comments to add. So at this point, um, County Council, we have a need to go into executive session. We do, Mr. Chairman. Um, I may, pursuant to the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act, the public body may enter into executive session for the purpose of discussing certain enumerated subjects. The board now wishes to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing attorney-client privilege communication relative to Hatton versus County of Hudson, I'm sorry, County of Union et al. Attorney-client privilege communication relative to pending litigation, tax appeal, block 184, lot 3.01 in Kenilworth and attorney client privilege communication relative to potential litigation rate workers compensation lien Christopher Q. The minutes of the executive session shall be separated from the minutes of the open public session. The minutes of the executive session redacted as appropriate and necessary shall be available in approximately 30 days. The clerk to the board shall retain the original minutes until such time as the confidential limitations have been removed at which time they shall be made available. Upon the affirmative vote of a majority of the members present, the board may retire to executive session. Upon the board's return, it may or may not take formal action on the matters discussed. I'm sorry, it will not take any formal action on the matters discussed. Thank you, County Council. May I entertain a motion to enter into executive, executive session? Moved by Freelder Mirabella, seconded by Freelder Jallo. Uh, clerk, can you read the roll? Builder Bergen. Yes. Builder Estrada. Yes. Builder Granados. Yes. Builder Jallo. Aye. Builder Kowalski. Yes. Builder Mirabella. Builder Wright. Yes. And Chairman Hudak. Aye. Chairman, you have eight votes in the affirmative.